Golconda. It is a fortified citadel and ruined city located in the western outskirts of Hyderabad, Telangana. The timing for Golconda Fort is from morning 9 am to evening 5.30 pm. Here visitors are not allowed to enter the fort unless they are going for the light and show at night. So if you want to enjoy the sound and light show, please go to this fort at the time of evening. And the fort is open on all days of the week. Here, each building and fortification within the citadel was shaped and positioned to help transport the sound. That's why its guard and occupants could easily communicate in the event of an attack on the fort. Now this is the time, go to the silent and calm place and enjoy the sound and light show. So it starts now. Forces through the veins of Pratap Rudra and valiant warriors like you stand by us. We can face any calamity, but we must be on guard. We will build a new fort here in Mangalwaram. Bengali Sultanate in the Deccan. But very soon, fresh clashes broke out between the Bengali Sultans and the King of Varangal. What caused this fighting? Oh, the usual problem. It was the land between the Tungabhadra and Krishna rivers which became the bone of contention. Vijayanagar and Vijayapurna. The administration of Golconda too is stronger than ever before. And we shall have to keep it so. Therefore, we have decided to make Golconda our capital. But it is not in the center of the kingdom, my lord. Nevertheless, there is no other place more suited for the defense of our kingdom. A mud fort already exists here. We shall strengthen this fort with stone and mortar and reside here as well. So, this was the first time that a ruler decided to make Golconda his capital and live there. Absolutely. Sultan Kuli had brought with him from Hamada images of the Tarnatal. There are eight gates and 87 bastions the crenellated wall and two more stone walls within the outer rampart protect Bala Hissa. What is all this clapping about? Who are these people? Oh, merely tourists like you. When you entered the Bala Hissa, you must have come to a grand portico. Some people are standing there, while some others are at the Baradari. The portico has been so constructed that if you stand in the center beneath the roof and clap loudly, it can be clearly heard at the Baradari. This is indeed a remarkable feat of engineering skill. You must realize that there were no telephones in that age. And so whenever somebody came to the Baradari, his arrival was announced to the guards at the Baradari by clapping. Right at the top of the hill, almost 450 feet away. Look, there it is, there, at the top. From there, one can see the entire area surrounding the fort. The Diwani Khas of the Sultan is just below the Baradari. To reach it, you have to ascend. The Mosque of Ibrahim Qutub Shah, the Dal Mahal where the Sultan heard petitions, and the Mahakali Temple, built probably by the Kakati rulers. The Kutub Shahi Sultans must have been very tolerant. Very true. There was no religious intolerance during the Kutub Shahi rule. Where did the Sultan live? Right here. 280 steps descend from the Divane Khas to the Sultan's residence. Here, where the fabulous Rani Mahals and the Sultan's quarters were situated. Ah, this palace, with its luxuriously decorated rooms, open courtyards, verdant gardens and sparkling fountains, must have been a veritable paradise. I am so pleased to see you on the throne of Golconda, my lord. Have you forgotten the splendor of Vijayanagar so soon, Bhagirathi? Our Golconda is just a village compared to it. In Vijayanagar, I was ordinary princess. 
and the wife of an exiled prince. But here in Golconda, I am the queen of the most successful sultan of the Deccan. Without your constant support, Bhagirathi, we could not have regained our kingdom. <laughs> By the side of the Musi River, near the fort, she was extremely beautiful and accomplished in music. And if you enjoy this, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.